In the previous section, we focused on the main functionality of our TV Tracker app, interacting with APIs and building a nice user interface. In this section, we'll be focusing on AngularJS directives to build reusable components. Directives are possibly the most powerful feature of the AngularJS framework, but arguably the most complicated. This section will simplify the directive API and teach you everything you will need to know to make use of this powerful feature. As part of this section, we'll also create some directives for our app to improve maintainability and add additional features. In the first video of this section, we will unravel the directive API and learn best practices to make development easier. Additionally, we are going to discover how and why we would want to make use of directives in our TV Tracker app. As part of the last section, we created the Search and My Shows pages. You may have noticed that we duplicated some code to achieve the same functionality for the Search and My Shows pages. Duplicated code is always bad practice as it decreases the maintainability of your code. If we wanted to change how the shows are displayed, we would need to make changes in multiple locations. As we want to display basic show information in many places throughout our application, on the same page and across multiple, then it makes sense to split out this functionality into a component that can just be included as it is required. This way we have a single location dealing with displaying basic information about shows. Before we move on to building this component, let's create the file structure needed to learn a bit more about AngularJS directives. As our components will be independent of sections, we will create another root folder called components. Inside this folder, we will have a subfolder for each component in our application. Let's start with the show component. Inside this folder, we need to create three files show.directive.js, show.tpl.html, and show.css. These three files will make up our directive component. Firstly, we'll write some boilerplate directive code and then we can discuss in detail how directive is put together and the options we have available. Directives are declared in the same way as a controller or factory and in this example we have added the show overview directive to the app.core module. The directive function returns an object which holds all of the configuration options. The template URL property points to the template file which will hold the HTML markup for the directive. In this example, it is the show.tpl.html file we have just created. You can alternatively just use the template property and provide a string of HTML which can be useful for small directives. The restrict property allows us to specify how the directive will be used. E stands for element, another available option A stands for attribute and the final option is C for class. Let's take a quick look at what this means. If we set the restrict property to E for element, then to use the directive we would have to reference it in HTML as an element. If we set the restrict property to A for attribute, then we would need to reference it as an attribute on another element. And if we set the restrict property to C for class, then we can reference it using a class. We are able to use a combination such as EAC and then all of the options would be available for this directive. For our show overview directive though, we'll simply use E. Take note that when you reference the directive, you must convert the camel case name, show overview, to a hyphen delimited string, show hyphen overview. The next property within the directive definition object is the scope property. The scope property allows you to create an isolated scope for your directive and also bind to element attributes. For our show overview directive, we are going to need the show object to be able to display all the information we need. So we'll add the show property to the scope object and use the equals to indicate two-way binding to this data. Other options available are the at symbol for one-way text binding and the ampersand for executing functions in a parent scope. Be careful to only use two-way data binding when you actually need it and don't just blindly create an isolated scope. The final property in the DDO is the controller. This seems pretty self-explanatory. Just like a controller for a route, we are able to access the isolated scope where we can add our show overview functionality. However, there are many other options than using a controller. There is also a link and compile option. This article at sitepoint.com provides an excellent explanation to the differences between them and why you would want to use one over the other. To simplify this complicated concept, 
let's just look at the two most commonly used options, controller and link. The link function provides two additional parameters to the scope object, element and attributes. The element variable provides access to the element the directive is declared on, and the attributes variable provides access to other element attributes. Because of this rule, it is simple. If you want to perform DOM-based manipulations or access any DOM attributes, then use the link function. Otherwise, use the controller. And with that rule, we will use the controller for our show overview directive. Don't forget to check out the sitepoint.com article to get an even deeper understanding of the options available to you. This covers all of the core concepts of creating custom directives. You know how to create one, use it within your HTML and also what configuration options are available. In the next video we will take this boilerplate code and finish our show overview directive.